Denver, Colorado, 15 miles east of the Rocky Mountains, a city proud of its outdoor recreational opportunities. But pride runs deep in Denver when you mention indoor sports, and today gymnastics is the main event. On hand, Olympic finalist Lance Ringald. Another Olympian in Denver is Brandi Johnson. At the Seoul Games, she was the best all-around performer for the USA. The collegiate ranks are well represented. The University of Nebraska's Patrick Kirksey is the 1989 Big 8 all-around champion. A young lady familiar to ESPN viewers is Wendy Bruce. She was recently seen winning the mixed pairs event on this network with her partner, China's Li Jing. And the indomitable Conrad Borsanger, he is the Pac-10 all-around champion from Stanford. Today it is head-to-head -head gymnastics. Cheryl Dundas will face Jennifer Hadberg. On the men's side, it will be Drew DiStefano against Mark Warburton. They're gathered in Denver for tournament gymnastics, a unique format where the winners advance. ESPN, the Total Sports Network. And the United States Gymnastics Federation present the 1989 U.S. Challenge. Today it is match number four. Cheryl Dundas challenging Jennifer Hagberg, Mark Warburton against Drew DiStefano. The Denver Coliseum has been set up for some intense gymnastics competition. This is match number four in a series of six first-round matches, a series of 11 Friday nights of gymnastics here on ESPN. Hello, everyone. I'm Leandra Riley, and welcome to Denver, Colorado. Coming up, we have some great gymnastics in store for you. In case you're not familiar with the format of this tournament, well, it's just like an NCAA basketball tournament. We have brackets to show you, and whoever wins advances to the next round. Let's take a look at how the women match up. Again, this is our fourth show, and Cheryl Dundas and Jennifer Hagberg are competing for the the opportunity to go up against Lisa Panzeroni in the next round. Meanwhile, on the men's side, Mark Warburton and Drew DeStefano are competing in this telecast for the opportunity to go up against Mark Vor or Conrad Vorsanger. Right now, let me introduce to you our expert analyst in this telecast. He's an Olympic gold medalist, Bart Connor. We talked about the men. Let's continue in that vein. How do our competitors compare? Let's first talk about Drew DeStefano against Mark Warburton. Well, certainly Mark Warburton has the advantage here. He's a junior at the University of Nebraska, which is a program that produce guys like Phil Cahoy and Scott Johnson and Jim Hartung, all of them Olympians. That's easily been the most dominant collegiate program in the last 10 years. The advantage has to go with Warburton there. On the women's side, they're looking for a chance to go up against Lisa Panzeroni. It's going to be Jennifer Hagberg against Cheryl Dundas. And although Jennifer is very strong in floor and vaulting, she'll have her hands full with Cheryl Dundas. Cheryl just missed making the Olympic team last year. She placed 10th in the all-around in the final Olympic trials. All right, we're going to have some tremendous gymnastics in store for you. When we come back, we will begin with the Olympic rotation. The men will start on the floor exercise. The women will begin with vaulting. Stay with us. Gymnastics begin in a moment. Welcome back to Denver, Colorado for the 1989 U.S. Challenge. This is the fourth matchup of six first round matchups in this single elimination type format. Mark Warburton and Drew DiStefano will be competing on the floor exercise. The women will not be involved right now as they only compete on four apparatus, the men on sixth. We are following the Olympic rotation, floor exercise is first. Mark Warburton is 21 years old. He's from the University of Nebraska. Okay, he opened with a tuck double back, and it was a little weak. He's had some major ankle problems, including ankle surgery to remove some bone chips, and so he's not at his full strength on floor exercise. I was talking with his coach, Francis, Francis Allen, just a few minutes ago, and said that his apparatus is very strong, but floor and vaulting are going to be weak for him here because he's not fully rehabilitated from the ankle injury. Nice. 
press to a handstand, his third run, front, front, a little short. He doesn't have the explosive power that he needs to have, and I'm sure much of that is because he's not back to full strength yet. That's a Y scale. I have an artistic way of catching your breath. <laughs> Run step out through to a layout. Punch front. Funny how. Not bad for a guy with bone chips in his ankles. Yeah, he'll be much stronger there. This, the tumbling is very weak relative to what it takes to be a top national competitor. He opens with a tuck double back, and he knows that the tumbling isn't all there yet. The takeoff is a little weak. He's not quite as high as he should be. And, of course, you can see landings are a problem for him because he has not yet gotten the strength back in the ankles to accommodate the kind of pounding that those heavy tumbling exercises do. But as you can see on the flares... He's still just as strong as anyone, and certainly we'll see this type of activity when he gets to the pommel horse. He's very strong there. Five feet, seven inches tall, the lanky Mark Warburton receives a 9.25 for his performance on the floor. And that sets the stage for his competitor, Drew DiStefano. Drew is 20 years of age. His hometown is Plano, Texas. Currently, however, he resides in Albuquerque, attending the University of New Mexico. He says this is his favorite event, and I watched him tumbling in warm-up. He does some interesting things. Triple full, way over does it. Very powerful on the takeoff. But not only did he over-twist it, he over-rotated a little bit, and stepping out of bounds will be a deduction. Good tuck double back. the handstand. Good control. Front, front. It's the same moves we saw for the third pass from his competitor, Mark Warburton, but he's just a little springier. He's got just a little more zip in his tumbling. Here's his last run. Double fall. Kind of a weak dismount considering the opening two runs were very strong. He should normally probably does a tuck double back for a dismount to beef up the difficulty. As soon as the score is posted. This is a really explosive triple full. He gets some major airtime. And let me tell you, you really have to crank to get three twists in. He made it easily, in fact, too easily, because he over-rotated and even stepped out of bounds. Now in the dismount, he does a double full. On up back handspring double full. And I'm sure he normally does a tuck double back, but you can see he's got a pretty heavily taped ankle, and I'm sure he's going, trying to save his body because this type of format of competition is a strenuous few days, and so uh, he wants to save some of his good stuff for the later rounds if he, if he advances. We saw him do the triple twister. What's the maximum? Three well, and a half? Four? Uh, triple full is about the max. There, there's been some trampolinists that uh, have made four twists, but uh, nobody does it in competition. Triple full is the max. And the scores are very, very close on men's floor exercise. Warburton, 9.25. DeStefano, 9.20. We'll continue in a moment. After one rotation, Mark Warburton leads Drew DeStefano by five hundredths of a point, 9.25 to 9.20. We are ready now to meet the women gymnasts for the first time. They will be vaulting. The women are allowed to execute two vaults. Each vault is scored separately. Only the higher of the two will count. And this smiling face belongs to Cheryl Dundas. But she was born in Denver, Colorado. Which welcome Cheryl Dundas. Cheryl Dundas competes for Capital Gymnastics. Jim Jarrett is her coach. She's just 16 years of age. Good job. Really clean vault in the air. She's pleased with that one. So is her coach. She did the round off approach vault. Good block. Nice yes, laid out position in the air. She Good clean totally line. She said Good shot. landing. 9.55 is the score, score is of the first vault. Now the score actually sounds a little low because she did a straight 
laid out flip. A lot of the other girls are adding twists there. So the reason why the score sounds a little low is because it doesn't have the high difficulty rating that a vault like that with a twist would. In fact, this vault last year used to be worth a 9.9 maximum. Now this year, it's only worth a 9.7 maximum. So a 9.55 is a very good score on that vault. And a nailed landing. She might even score a little better on that one. You can't do it much better than that. Cheryl Dundas starting off her single elimination competition very well. Cheryl performing a laydown. Good approach. Nice, clean form in the air. She even grabs her legs a little bit. I don't think she needs to do that. When she gets her confidence up a little bit, I think she'll be able to stay laid out and not worry about pulling on the legs, but more continuing to stretch in the laid out position. But needless to say, that's a very clean ball. And the second vault was also scored 9.55. So Cheryl Dundas completes her first rotation, 9.55. Now Jennifer Hackberg will also Jennifer compete on the vault. She is 18 years of age. She was born in Minnesota, currently resides in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. She competes for Olympic Gymnastics Academy. And this is one of her favorite events. Powerful run. Really clean, laid out Sukahara. Realized we just lied to you, ladies and gentlemen. We just saw Jennifer Cheryl Dundas do her vault. She did the round off approach. This is a similar vault, but it's with the traditional approach, the round off on and the laid out position off. She's very powerful. Score being posted. Nine Once again, you can see she goes on five. forward, turns half turn onto the horse. In a good stretch position in the right now. She traditionally scores well in vaulting. At the U.S. Olympic Sports Festival, she finished second in vaulting in 1987. At the 1987 McDonald's Gymnastics Championships of the USA, she finished sixth in vaulting. She has signaled to the judges that she's going to do the same vault again. It's a Sukahara stretched or laid out, and it's worth a maximum of a 9.7. Nice job. Again, the first vault was a 9.45. She'll try to better that number. You think it was a better vault? Yeah, I think it was a little better. She had better distance. She was good and clean in the air. She fought the landing there. Pretty nice job. It's interesting, she's been in gymnastics 10 years, and she's been in Italy, she's been in the Soviet Union a couple of times, and she's been all over the United States. And it's interesting, interesting to see that that's one of the great aspects about the sport of gymnastics, it's a very international game. There you see her numbers, 9.475. The second vault was just a little bit better, but she still trails Cheryl Dundas, who scored a 9.55. Let's move over now to the pommel horse, where Drew DiStefano is ready to compete. Again, he and Mark Warburton are very, very close in the standings. There's a back more with a little form break. He's having some trouble bending his knees. He shouldn't bend his knees, he shouldn't break form or rhythm on this exercise. It's a little choppy, isn't it? Okay. He needs a little longer swing. I'm sure he's working on that. He's good at the handstands, though. He's able to get to the handstand position on a couple of the skills to get good difficulty points. But in terms of total rhythm and total difficulty of that exercise, uh, it was a little choppy. In fact, it was a lot choppy. He loops around here. You see he's tight. He doesn't have great elevation over. It looked like he was going to go up all right here. He had to fight the handstand a little bit. He's very strong in the handstand position. But unfortunately, it was a one-dimensional exercise. You had a couple of handstands, but not any really long, flowing sequences. Even the scissors were a little bit low, and of course, that's a requirement, is that you have to have those legs really up there on your single leg work. And Drew received an 8.35 for his second apparatus. You recall on the floor exercise, he received a 9.20. That opens the door a little bit for Mark Warburton, who only had a .05 advantage over Drew. Let's see what he does on the pommel horse. We've seen another telecast, Bart Connor. The pommel horse has proved to be the undoing of numerous gymnasts. Well, it's certainly one of the most difficult events for young gymnasts because it's so hard to learn the proper rhythm. Right away, he has trouble. You know, he got off to a really good start. He had some very difficult elements right at the beginning. 
but it looked like he rushed down towards the end. And once again, you fall off, you lose a half of a point. You have to pick up from the exercise right where you left off. This will make the competition close. Uh, DiStefano had trouble on horse. And now Warburton, although Warburton has a really much better style, a longer swing, a more fluid style, and certainly a lot more difficulty as he goes up to the handstand there. It's a good feel for the rhythm of what makes a good pommel horse work. But you can't make major errors like he did. Loop around, handstand, full turn. Good finish, it's too bad he had problems early on. The score he wants to beat is 8.35. That's what Di Stefano had. He opens up with back more, pommel loop, and then he reaches across. This is a very difficult element. And he clips his knee on the pommel. He didn't quite have the elevation that he normally has. And of course, once you clip a knee, besides the pain and the yeah. blood that pours through your pant leg, you also have to try and pick up the rhythm of the exercise. It is very difficult. This is the beast, the pommel horse has been referred to as the pig by a lot of the gymnastics enthusiasts because this is the one that'll get you. You mean it's the pommel pig or the... <laughs> <laughs> Instead of PH, we'll call it PP. I'm sure that's what Mark wants to call it. He receives an 8.8. .8. It's good enough to keep his lead over Di Stefano. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Denver Coliseum here in Denver, Colorado. This is our fourth show of 11 shows here on ESPN. And after one rotation, Cheryl Dundas leads Jennifer Hagberg by a .075 margin. On the men's side, two rotations have been completed. Mark Warburton is leader by a .5 margin over Drew DiStefano. And right now we are going to the Steel Rings event. This is the third event for the men. And Mark Warburton is up first. Mark lists the rings as one of his best events. As I mentioned earlier, he's been having trouble with an ankle, so his floor and vaulting, the tumbling type events, aren't that strong. But you can see he's very strong in the upper body. As he opened that routine with a kip to an L cross, he kips back to an L and a beautiful straddle plunge. Giant to a handstand. See, he has good locked out arms on the handstands. A really nice combination of piked double whippets or yamawakis as they were invented by Yamawaki from the Japanese team. Now he's swinging, is that gonna hurt him? Yeah, for every full swing, the judges take a tenth of a point, but his challenge is to not allow the swinging elements to throw him off, because if you bail from the handstand at the wrong time, you could really be in a lot of trouble. Although the swings are minor deductions, you can't let them turn into major deductions. Watch this combination. He stays in the pike position. One Yamawaki to the next. <laughs> Pretty silly names, aren't they? <laughs> Back uprise to a straddle L. Really good swing elements. He showed good strength elements at the beginning, something the judges are looking for. And an excellent layout double back with one short hop. His score is 9.60. Nice layout. Great exercise. He has everything. He's got the strength, the swing, and a good dismount. His advantage going in was 0 .5, 9.60. His third score of this U.S. Challenge round. Now Drew DiStefano is up. Lifting him up to the rings is Ed Birch, who coaches in Albuquerque. Also coaches... Uh, current star of the U.S. team, Lance Reynolds. No trouble on that plunge. He's a little nervous. It seems like he could settle down a little bit and focus on the positions. He seems to be rushing it a little bit. Is he too fast on the press to handstand? Mm -hmm. He needs to take his time and show the judges that he's in control. 
He's a little anxious. He's very quick. And I'm sure he has that very high-spirited performance, which many times is very impressive. But when you get to the slow parts, you have to squeeze out the positions and show the judges that you're completely in control at all times. And he had trouble there. He bails out forward, does a Yamawaki, as we've seen Warburton just do, but he did it in a tuck position, and it didn't have the long, flowing swing mm -hmm. that Warburton used. This is the dismount, laid out double, a little sloppy in the air, but plenty of rotation. Well, that's what I like about this uh, U.S. Challenge format. We can see two gymnasts head-to-head. -head. Now there's a score for Drew DiStefano, 8.95. And even if you know nothing about gymnastics, you can simply compare in your living room what these two gymnasts are doing and who actually is the better gymnast. Continuing now with the women as they move over to their second event, the uneven parallel bars are next. Jennifer Hagberg is up first. Stand, she changes grip. That move's called a Jaeger. It's a straddle front flip. She traverses to the lower bar. She has to work both bars. The judges are looking for changes of direction. She's shown that by doing pirouettes. There's a reverse. Oh! That was a reverse act. She was going for her second release move, which is really the style these days. One release move isn't enough anymore. You have to show two big release moves if you want the big scores. You'll recall she received a 9.475 on the vault. Her opponent received a 9.55, so she's already down 0.075, and the last thing she needed was a fall in the uneven. Keep in mind, she'll lose a half a point, and then she has to pick up the exercise from where she left off with a very nice pike double this one. It's a shame she had trouble on the reverse head, because that was a good routine. She had a lot going there. This is the Jaeger. You can see she's going forward with an under grip, straddled front flip right there to a regrasp. Nicely done, and she traverses to the lower bar. Glide kip, and she continues on. Now, she had trouble here. This is the reverse hect. Everything looks pretty good. She pulls it just too far over the bar. So you can see she's way out on her fingertips, and she didn't quite get the reverse rotation back to allow her hands to catch back onto the bar. It's a very difficult move. She just about had it. She finished, of course, with a very nice pike double back. That's too bad because the reverse heck actually looked pretty good up yeah. until it came time to regrass. Technically, it was good. The form in the air was good. It was just a little overdone. 8.975 is the score for Jennifer for that uneven parallel bar performance. And now Cheryl Dundas is up. On the vault, she received a 9.55. Straddle over to the high bar. Cast the handstand. Giant half, half. She had a little trouble there, but she kept it going right to a reverse hack. Now that's the move that we just saw her competitor, Hagberg, have trouble with, but she made it nicely. Back to handstand. Giant swing. Giant swing. Two very nice giants. And a tuck double back. That was a nice, clean routine by Cheryl Dundas, the 16-year-old, born in Denver, Colorado, but currently residing in Austin, Texas. She did the giant half-half. It was supposed to be a full turn in one motion, but she continued right through to a reverse hex, so she used two important and difficult moves back-to-back, -back, and the judges are looking for those things. They can value-raise the score if you do two difficult moves back-to-back. Well, all she needed was an 8.95, and she got a lot more than that from the judges. A uh, 9.675 is the number granted to Cheryl Dundas for her performance in the uneven parallel bars. She is now way out in front of Jennifer Hackberg. Welcome back to the 1989 U.S. Challenge. Mark Warburton is ahead of Drew DiStefano, 27.65 to 26.50. On the women's side, Cheryl Dundas is ahead of Jennifer Hagberg, 19.225 to 18.450, a difference of 
7-5. The women have now moved to their third event, which is the balance beam. The men will vault. Now this is the event that makes or breaks a lot of gymnasts. You don't really get a chance to relax because just standing there, the opportunity to fall off exists. Cheryl Dundas is up first. Oh, that's a very pretty mount. A round off onto the board and a one-handed back handspring on, right to a serious back handspring layout. Beautiful start. She says this is her favorite event, and you can see why. She is excellent here. Very pretty switch leg split leap. Beautiful full turn. Look at the flexibility. Needle scales are always associated with women's gymnastics. Again, showing her flexibility. And strength. How about mm. that? She planges down that handstand. Notice how she just takes her time and she looks for every position. She fulfills requirements like that, a series of gymnastic elements or leaps. Swing through layout right on, right to a split leap. That's a mixed series that the judges are looking for. Acro and gymnastic elements back to back. Back handspring, back handspring, and a double four. Excellent routine for Cheryl Dundas. A beautiful routine. Well, the balance beam certainly didn't break her. Although she didn't really have a dynamic, explosive dismount, the back handsprings to the double full were fine. But the best part of the exercise was right here. That one-handed back handspring on was so pretty and so elegant. She got ready for the dismount. Back handspring, back handspring. Step into a double full. She isn't quite as high as you see some of the gymnasts who perform the tuck double backs, but she handled it beautifully and nailed the landing. And got a beautiful score, 9.825. And that ties a meet record. Brandy Johnson also received a 9.825 in show number one of the balance beam, so now she has been tied in the record department with Cheryl Dundas. Now Jennifer Hagberg hopes she has the same luck on the balance beam. Well, she did a similar mount, a round off and a back handspring on. This time she used two hands. In comparison with Cheryl, who used just a one-handed back handspring, flip-flop layout, and she fights it. So far, they've begun with similar acrobatic elements. There's a series of leaps. Sets up there for a layout. She overdoes that. She's really powerful. Most people just barely make those. She just blasted over the top and made it easily. Very pretty leap. And stag handstand down to a plant. The judges need to see the gymnast working not only high above the beam, but also right down on the beam. There's her full turn. Whoa. The cartwheel, she had a little trouble on that cartwheel, and that's one of those simple elements that can get you every time. You can't give away points on the easy elements because you want to do your best to keep the exercise perfect, and if there's any room for errors, they're only on the most difficult elements. There's a discount. Round off double full. Oh! Find it on her heels. I don't know what happened there. It didn't look like she got a really good push off the beam when she punched, and that caused her to over rotate. She laid it back a little too much. Let's see if we can see what happened. She does a round off. She really dumps it back, and she doesn't get quite the block and the push that she needed. And of course, that caused the over rotation. Once again, you can see here. And she's crooked already coming off the beam, so yep. she didn't get a good direct push off. Twisted a little early and laid it back. This is a good part of the routine, though. She does round off, back handspring right on, and then she followed it up, although she had to fight it. She followed it up with a nice series of back handspring to the layout. 
what makes it exceptionally difficult is that Cheryl Dundas tied a meet record with a 9.825 on the balance beam. So now Jennifer Hagberg, who's already .775 behind her, receives a score of 8.80 for that beam routine, and now is more than a point behind Cheryl Dundas. The men are ready to vault. Drew DeStefano will vault first. In men's competition, only one vault is allowed. It's do or die time. One point one five separates Drew from Mark. Sometimes I wish the guys could get two vaults because I, th I think they should. It's been a long time since they've had the opportunity to warm up. And so lay out Sukahara. One short hop on the landing. Pretty nice vault. See, but like the girls, when they do two vaults, they get to go do that one more time and hopefully stick the second one. Of course, I have to admit, the older I got, the more the ankles hurt, and one vault was plenty. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Although, interestingly enough, a lot of the vaults that we've seen today was the first vault that counted in the scores. That's true, and I really feel that if you really just fire up and just give your best effort on the first one, perhaps the girls relax a little on the first one, knowing That's that they got one more to go. I think it's a, it's a mental game, yes, knowing you've got a, a chance to make up for it. 9.15, the vaulting score for Drew. We now move over to Drew's rival in this Mark bracket. Mark Warburg, he too Nebraska's will execute Mark just Warburg. one vault. We saw him have trouble on his punching on the floor exercise. I expect he'll have trouble here as well because he's not fully recuperated from that ankle injury. Let's see what he does. Okay, a little trouble on the landing, and I'm sure that stung on that landing, but he did a laid out Sukahara. He's, <laughs> he's back. grabbing his back. He has pretty good vault, actually. Pretty good position in the air, and he w got plenty of rotation. In fact, he had trouble controlling the landing. Not bad arch position in the layout. But this vault doesn't have the maximum level of difficulty that some of the twisting vaults do, so the score won't be that high. 9.0 is the score for Mark Warburton. He's still grimacing about his back, but he still has the lead. Welcome back. Cheryl Dundas leads Jennifer Hagberg after three rotations by a 1.8 margin, 29.05 to 27.25. On the men's side, as they move into their fifth rotation, it's Mark Warburton over Drew DiStefano by a one-point margin, 36.65 to 35.65. The women have one event remaining, the men have two. So let's go now to the parallel bars where Mark Warburton is up. This is certainly one of Mark's best events. And it's also one of his favorite events. I guess that's no coincidence, really. Here's his mount, peach straddle cut. Nice extension, good long handstand. Oh, little trouble on that stutz. There's a nice Healy turn, two in a row, good combination. Back toss, very nice. He has a nice fluid style here, actually. He's not rushing it. Good looking handstand positions. Tuck double back with good form. Oh, over-rotate a little bit. Once again, probably an ankle problem there on the dismount. But the rest of the exercise was good. He had a little sloppy form and a little over-rotation on one of the stutzes. Otherwise, really good. I think his back is still bothering him. This is the tuck double back. He slings it back a little bit, which causes him to over-rotate. And you can see he pulls his feet through just a little too far. He made it a little easier than, I thought he, than he thinks he thought he was going to make it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He didn't think he had it, but it turned out he did. That's what I meant. <laughs> 9.35, the score for Mark Warburton on the parallel bars. Now, they just have one event remaining, and that is the horizontal bar. So Drew DeStefano, who trails by a full point at this juncture, needs to gain his ground quick. Drew was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now he lives, however, in Plano, Texas. And Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he's taking his training. Right. Glide. Reverse straddle to a plange and a press to a handstand. Good start. It's a stutz. Reverse cast. 
routine's a little choppy again, a little bit like the horse routine. He needs to stretch that handstand, make the line look a little longer, get a more fluid swing, right. and it'll be a little easier for him. He's a very talented young man. I just don't think that he's really concentrating on good, long swings. He rushes things, and of course, he rushes the lift off of this pike double back, and he's going to be short of rotation because of that. The score he wants to beat is 9.35. He wants to beat Drew in the... Uh, beat Mark rather on the parallel bars, but the score he gets is 8.65. So things have gotten a little worse for Drew DiStefano as they get ready to move into their sixth and final rotation. The women are in their fourth and final rotation. This is Jennifer Hagberg on the floor. 1.8 separates her from Cheryl Dundas. She just turned 18 a few days ago. I see that she and I have the same birthday, the 28th. Happy birthday, Barb. <laughs> this is her favorite event. Oh, it's a triple full. Way overdone. Oh, it's still fun to watch. Yeah, it was beautiful in the air. She just had a little bit too much juice. Still looks like she's having a good time out there. Tough leap combination. Look at that determination. Mike Double. Good job. Beautiful. Well, she certainly didn't get tired. A fine finish by Jennifer Hagberg, beginning with that triple twist. Unfortunately, she had too much, but then rallied back for a strong performance. This really was a good-looking move till she went flying out of the area. She really was up there. Look at the form. Her feet together, good toe point. She didn't quite make the twist, of course, and because she was over-rotate a little bit, that's the reason she had to go flying out of bounds. You lose a couple of tenths of a point for losing control as well as going out of bounds. She came back with a really nice pike double though. Good form, pulls it around, and she really nailed that landing. Oh, looks went like her heel went out of bounds, which will be another tenth of a point deduction. Her dismount once again was a double full. She really twists cleanly and beautifully. The floor exercise area is 40 by 40. Do you foresee a day when they maybe make it 42 by 42 to accommodate the more powerful tumbling? Well, you know, they're going that so direction. They're getting more powerful stuff. We saw in Seoul, we saw the first triple backflip done on floor exercise. I wouldn't be against that. I don't mind, wouldn't mind seeing it a little bit. Better. I think they need more room. They're doing more difficult tumbling. They'd still go out of bounds. It'd just be a longer run. We'd put, we'd pack more skills in. That's I'm sure it more room. 9.40 is the score for Jennifer. Cheryl Dundas just needs then a 7.65 to win. Way out, Pike. Nice job. shorter rotation. She pulled that round off out of nowhere. She 
doesn't seem to be quite with her music to me. Double full dismount. You're right in a way. There's something about the exercise. The music is terrific and her dance is terrific. But it's not in sync for some reason. It's not that it's not in sync. It's just for some reason, I don't know whether the direction of the routine was built towards the music. Mm-hmm. Boy, she barrels across on this first move. Round off back handspring, lay out pike. Really nice job there. And she nailed the landing. She was all over the place in warm-ups on that, and she handled it beautifully. One more rotation to go, and that is the man on horizontal. This is where she had trouble. Handspring front with a full. She's short of rotation, and as you mentioned, she really gutted out the next series round off. Straddle jump to a front, and she had to fight it to stay on her feet. Yeah, her, her back might be hurting after that. 9.675, as I said, all she needed was a 7.65. So handily, Cheryl Dundas is our winner this day. We have the final scores now for the women in this 1989 U.S. Challenge. Cheryl Dundas has defeated Jennifer Hagberg 38.725 to 36.650. So Cheryl Dundas will face Lisa Panzeroni in the next rotation. On the men's side, with one event remaining, Mark Warburton is our leader over Drew DiStefano. And the one event that is remaining is the horizontal bar. And Drew DiStefano needs to hit and hopes that Mark Warburton should fall off because he trails now by 1.70. Back up rise, do a free hip, cross change, oh, cross change front. Just a little too far out. There's not a lot you can do when you're too far away from the bar. When you're in tight, there's something you can do, but he does a cross change to a front, and he pitches it out just a little bit, and you can see just out there on the end of his fingertips. We all know that feeling. And you're reaching like crazy, and you wish you didn't cut your fingernails that day because you might be able to hang on. He gets back up into Giants. There's a front. Oh, good one. That was a very nice front. Jam, there he does. Good job, those are his eagle giant swings. Hop and a pirouette. Blind, turn over pirouette. Picks up speed for his dismount. A layout double, slings it out a little bit, but he just nails the landing. I agree with you, it looked like he was flying out a little too much, but he stuck it. Gee, it's too bad he fell off, because he really rallied nicely for the end. Yeah, the second release move was done very nicely. Right away, he does cast right to handstand. <laughs> little bent knees there. I think he thought he was a little mm -hmm. closer in. And that's what happens. If you pitch one out, then the next one, you go right away and pull it in close because you're compensating, of course. And right here, he kind of peeled on this, but he did a really nice job at keeping good tight body position and just springing into the landing. Good control there. Drew DiStefano waiting for his score. There you see it, 8.40. And now Mark Warburton is our final competitor in this fourth show. Again, there are six first round matches. This is the fourth, there are two remaining before we move into the second round of competition. Mark Warburton being lifted by his coach, Francis Allen from the University of Nebraska. Oh, that's a beautiful combination for an opening skill. In bar stalder with the long grip. Look at these one arms to a gorgeous ginger. That's a nice combination. Oh, I can't believe it. He did the hard move beautifully and totally missed the kip change, which is an A move, one of the easiest moves you can do. Beautiful once again is look at the line in this. Invert giant swings, hop and a pirouette. He has a really good looking style, excellent stretch and extension in his stallers. Here's the dismount, a beautiful laid out double. You know, I think what happened is that he was really concentrating on the big release move. And so as soon as he caught that, I think that's all he was worried about. 
I think his concentration lapsed a little bit, and he thought he was going to get by doing the easy move that Kip changed. Look at this. This is beautiful. Excellent position on the one arm. He goes over the top, back with a half. Perfect. Now, right here, this is an easy move. He just slings it out and tries to compensate, but there's not a lot you can do when your hips are supposed to be in the bar and you're supposed to be going over forward. He got back into the routine and did a beautiful layout double back. It's too bad he made a mistake there because he has an excellent routine. We could have seen a really high score there. Drew DiStefano received an 8.40 and already was trading by 1.70 going into this rotation. So Mark Warburton does not have any worries in terms of losing the meat. And we'll get a chance to see him make that move another time. That's right. He'll make it on. His score is 9.05. He does survive to compete yet another day against Conrad Vorsinger. Mark Burton defeated Drew DiStefano by a comfortable 2.35 margin, his all-around total 55.05. On the women's side, Cheryl Dundas prevailed over Jennifer Hagberg. Final score, 38.725 for Cheryl Dundas. She won by a 2.075 margin. Let's go now to Bart Connor, who's with our winners. Congratulations to you, Mark, and to you, Cheryl, as well, for moving on to the next round. And pretty easy wins, I would think. You had a good competition today. One of your best? Mm-hmm, I think it was. What was so good about today? Why did it work today? I'm not really sure, but coming into this meet, I was really confident, and I had trained hard, and so I think I was ready. Now you're up against Lisa Panzeroni in the next round. She scored a score just one-tenth of a point behind you in her qualification. How does that make you feel? Tomorrow's going to be tough, but I think it's going to be whoever's clean and whoever hits and looks the best. Well, good luck. Thanks. Well, Mark, you had a pretty easy victory today, but the next guy you're up against is Conrad Vorsanger. You can't be as casual today uh, in, against Vorsanger as you were today. No, not at all. Connor had a great meet today, and uh, I had a disastrous meet, I felt. But, uh, you know, it's all new tomorrow, and uh, clean, clean the slate and start all over. Hopefully what are you going to do differently? Um, I think I had to get my concentration up a lot more. I, I think I felt throughout this meet that I was, you know, slowly gaining on Drew, and, uh, and I just didn't have the intensity that I needed to, to keep hitting routines. And I made some dumb mental errors towards the end that, brought down my all-around score. And you'll have to have the intensity, of course, against Conrad. Exactly, yes. Well, best of luck to the both of you in the, in the next round. Leandra? Thank you very much, Bart. Congratulations, of course, to both Mark and Cheryl for a fine performance. Bart and I will be back in a moment with some final thoughts. Please stay with us. First round matchups have now been concluded with only two first round matchups remaining. For Cheryl Dundas, however, she is now in the second round and she will face Lisa Panzeroni in round two. On the men's side, Mark Warburton survives and again there are four first round matchups concluded for the men with only two remaining. Mark Warburton will face Conrad Vorsinger in round two. As the competition continues in these brackets, it's really interesting to see how tight the competition is getting. Mark Warburton was rather inconsistent moving through this round, but he can't have any inconsistency when he goes up against Conrad Forsanger in the next round. In the women's competition, Cheryl Dundas is going up against Lisa Panzeroni. Cheryl and Lisa are very tightly matched within a tenth of a point in their qualifying scores coming in to the next rotation. So gymnastics continues here on ESPN every Friday night. We'd like to remind you that on June 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern, Scott Burr will challenge Mike Williams while Robin Richter takes on Wendy Bruce. Bart Connor, as usual, it has been a pleasure working with you. Your comments are always delightful and very insightful. I'm Leander Riley saying so long from the Denver Coliseum. See you next time.